Hi, my name is Irene, and today I'm going to tell you the crazy story of how I lose control of myself and turn into these exciting characters from the movies I see. Unbelievable, right? When I was three, my parents first took me to see the movie Tarzan. It was amazing, but soon after we got home, I started howling and beating my chest, just like Tarzan. And then I literally swung from the curtains and pillars, crashing into everything that came in my way. Mom couldn't stop laughing, but Dad got super furious. What has gotten into this child? This is not funny. Stop her, now. But that wasn't the end of it. One evening, after we all watched the movie Child's Play on TV, I suddenly got up in the middle of the night and walked to Dad's bedside with googly eyes and a pencil in my hand. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? Dad screamed like a little girl and dived under the bed. This child is possessed. Take her away from me. She's evil. Mom calmed me down quickly, but Dad always stayed away from me after that. Then one day, Mom and I came home to find a note from him. I can't sleep with that devil child in the house. I'm leaving. Goodbye. And, well, we never saw him again. But unlike Dad, Mom loved me a lot, and life was better with him gone. I also loved going to school and had plenty of friends. That is, until the day everyone found out about my weird quirk. One day in the sixth grade, soon after I'd watched the Lord of the Rings movies at home, a teacher dropped her gold ring on the floor. As I saw it sparkling in the light, I suddenly transformed into Gollum. As I leapt forward to pick up the ring, she got to it first and I went ballistic. The filthy little thieves. Where is it? They stole it from us. My precious. Curse them. We hate them. It's ours. It is. And we want it. And with that, I attacked my teacher. She shrieked as other kids tried to hold me back. And someone called the principal. I almost got expelled. But mom was called in and she explained my condition. She decided I wasn't watching any movies for a very long time. But the news had already spread like wildfire in school. And everyone started calling me different names. Clown, loser, psycho, and many, many more. And the school queen bee, Olive, was the meanest of them all. Hold on, psycho. What are you going to turn into today? Hola, Harry Potteris. Can you fly using the janitor's broom? Cut it out, Olive. Oh, I'm scared. Are you going to turn me into a goblet with your magic? I could smack her with a broom for sure but I didn't want to upset mom by causing more trouble, so I kept a low profile, even though the bullying never stopped. In the ninth grade, I decided to join the drama club at school. One afternoon, I was rehearsing alone before auditions for the school play, when a handsome guy walked into the drama room. Hi, my name is Drake, and I'm here for the drama auditions. Am I in the right place? Oh, yes, you're in the right place at the right time. But before I could say a word, the wicked witch entered the room. Oh, there you are, Drake. Are you here for the role of the prince? Take it from me, babe. That role is made for you, and I'm meant to be your princess. But when everyone saw my acting skills, I got the lead role. Olive got selected for the maid's part, and Drake became my prince. I was loving all the attention I was getting from him, but it was clearly driving Olive crazy. How dare you flirt with Drake? He's mine. Really? I didn't see the owner's name tag on him. Oh, look who finally found her tongue. But hear me loud and clear, freak. You can be his princess in a play, but I'm still his queen in real life. Stay away from Drake or else. Bring it on. Well, she did. During breaks at rehearsals, she was all over him, touching his arm and laughing a little too hard at his jokes. But I wasn't going to just sit back and watch. The next day during costume trials, I walked in wearing a Catwoman costume, and Drake's jaw dropped when he saw me. OMG, Irene, you look me Yow. How about you curl me closer with that tail of yours? I gave him a wink and sat close to him as Olive turned red with anger and stormed out of the room. But then the next day, that witch came dressed up as Wonder Woman in a costume literally the size of a hanky. Her tactics didn't work, though, because one day at rehearsals, Drake asked me out in front of everyone. Of course, I said yes. As I was changing in the dressing room the next day, I nearly jumped out of my skin when I looked up and saw Olive's reflection in the mirror. 
She was holding up my costume that she'd ripped to shreds. OMG, Olive, you're such a psycho. You just wait and see what I do, Irene. I'm not gonna let a freak like you take away my dream boy. Ugh, she was insane. I pushed her aside and stormed out of the room, wondering what drama would come my way next. I didn't have to wait too long to find out, but it wasn't exactly what I'd expected. It was Drake's birthday on the weekend, and he'd invited half the school to his party. As soon as I arrived there, suddenly the music from the Twilight movie started to play on the speakers. As everyone looked around in surprise, I spotted Drake in the moonlight, and he looked just like Edward Cullen. Hello, Edward. Happy birthday. How old are you now? 104. Who's Edward? What are you talking about? Come on, Edward. I know you're a vampire. Your Bella is here. You can drink blood from my veins, and then we can live together for all eternity, my love. All the kids around us started laughing, while Drake just stared at me in shock, and then abruptly ran inside the house. Just then the music ended, and I realized the scene I'd made. And I'd scared Drake. That was just epic to watch. You acted even weirder than I hoped you would when I played the music. Now Drake's never gonna want to be with you. Freak. She was such a jerk. I started looking for Drake in the house to explain everything to him. Suddenly, I screamed when someone hugged me from behind. Drake, you scared me. Hi, babe. I just came in to get something for you. I didn't know when was the right time to show you, but I think it's now. Why was he being so strange? He was acting like nothing had happened a few minutes ago. But when I saw the thing he gave me, I was shocked. It was a photo album with hundreds of pictures of me. He clicked me going to the washroom, smelling my underarms, and picking my nose. What's wrong with you? Why did you take all these pictures? Because I fell in love with you at first sight, Irene. And after you wore that Catwoman costume, my God, I just can't get you out of my head. Now that I know you think our love is like Edward and Bella's, I wanted to show you that I'm equally obsessed with us. OMG, you're insane. Leave me alone. I, I don't want to be with you or even see you. And don't you dare follow me. I ran out of there as fast as I could. I couldn't believe I was dating a crazy psycho. The next day at school, I tried to hide from him, but he was following me around everywhere like a mad puppy. I hid out in the girls' bathroom for a while, but when I finally came out, I almost tripped over a body on the floor. It was Drake writhing around like he was in pain. It hurts. It hurts so bad. What hurts? Is it your tummy? Your appendix? No, baby girl. It's my heart. Quit playing games and say you love me too. Oh, shut up. You need therapy. I almost kicked him while shaking his hands off my ankle, and I ran away while everyone around us laughed hysterically. Olive called out to me. Oh, wow, girl. He's as crazy as you. He's all yours. Jeez, if he kept this up, I was going to need a restraining order. Later that night, as I was sleeping peacefully in my bed, I heard a faint creaking noise, and I turned around and screamed. Drake was standing by my bed. Are you freaking crazy? How do you even know where I live? Never mind. Don't answer that. Just get out. Babe, just give me a chance. I have an amazing gift for you. And with that, he started unbuttoning his shirt. Hey, don't. Ew, stop that. Relax. You're gonna love this. He took out an invitation card tucked inside his shirt. Oh, thank God. I know how crazy you are about acting, princess. And you know I would bring the world to your feet. Please, accept this invitation to a party on a cruise ship with Hollywood stars. Wait, what? Are you serious? Yes, yes, babe. As serious as my love for you. I want you to go with me to the party. But how'd you get those passes? Oh, I just stole them from my uncle's table when he wasn't looking. He knows many people in Hollywood. Okay, he was still a crazy psycho, but I couldn't miss this awesome opportunity, right? Meeting Hollywood celebrities would be like a wild dream come true. And Drake wasn't lying one bit. When we got onto the ship, I could feel my heart beating like crazy. I was at a party full of actors and directors I practically worshipped. Just then, I spotted the world-famous director, freaking James Cameron himself, right at the front of the ship. Here was my chance to get discovered. I turned to Drake. How much do you love me? Oh, as much as the depths of the sea, and the width of the sky, and the height of the... 
Okay, okay, I get it. You love me. You'll do anything for me, right? Anything, babe. We ran across the deck to the edge of the ship. I climbed onto the front railing with Drake right behind me, supporting me as I stretched my arms out just like in Titanic. Look, Jack, I'm flying. I'm flying, Jack. I'm the king of the world. Woohoo! Not now. Just shut up and kiss me, moron. As we kissed at the edge of the ship at sunset, lots of people around us started to cheer and clap. Even though it was Drake I was kissing, I had to admit it was a super romantic, movie-like moment. Just then he whispered in my ear, Rose, yeah, I think I'm gonna be seasick. I jumped onto the deck just in time as he hurled into the sea. Gross! The director I'd put on the show for walked up to me and smiled. I see you have a flair for acting. You really get into character, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. More than you can imagine. I like your enthusiasm. Here, take my card. Let's get you an audition. I couldn't believe my luck. This was truly amazing. And the next thing I knew, I'd been offered a role in a movie, and my life was flipped upside down. I left the city for good and moved to L.A. with my mom. Fast forward 10 years, I'm a successful actor in Hollywood and have fans all over the world. I still act out sometimes in the most embarrassing situations, but people just think I'm in character now for some movie role.